Okay, here we are back again with more Jade Empire. And uh, I fixed the camera issue, thank goodness. <laughs> um, scroll stand, sure. The physical universe, the scholar's hypothesis. To suggest that I, of all people, do not understand the significance or the importance of the celestial beings is preposterous. I pay my tributes at the temple because I honor those who gave us our minds and our curiosity. Philosopher Jang ignores the crux of the problem by hiding behind his arguments of divine belief. The scholars have made some recent discoveries, such as the way in which clouds are formed, but the philosophers, led by Jang, dismiss these theories without even hearing them out. How can we progress as a society if we refuse to accept new ideas and new concepts? The philosophers would have us cling to our traditions, even at the cost of our own prosperity. Fair enough. Here's another one. Ooh, configuration of the snake. Oh, this is Scholar Dongao. Okay. I could at least talk to him about the Inquisitor. I like this one. Okay. Welcome, friend. The lecture won't be starting for a little while, though your enthusiasm is appreciated. And I wouldn't worry about seating. Those interfering philosophers had made sure that very few people will be attending the lecture. Okay. Can you tell me where to find Inquisitor, the Inquisitor recruiter? What? Huh. That's quite, quite a question. <laughs> I'm not sure who told you, but I'd appreciate it if you would keep your voice down when asking those kinds of questions. No, I'm just going to yell it. Nobody here suspects me to be anything but an overzealous scholar, and I'd like to keep it that way. So you want to know about the recruiter? You have a flying machine, do you not? Yes, I know about that. Go back to the landing area and someone will meet you there. Uh, why should we meet there? The location is public, yet relatively private. Common folk are not welcome on the landing area, so there will be no crowds to hide spies or an ambush. How do I know this isn't a trap? If the Lotus Assassins wanted you dead, your life would be over before you even knew you were in danger. They've wanted me dead for a while now, and I'm still not. But okay, fine. I'll tell, tell the Inquisitor Recruiter I'll be there. He already knows, I'm sure. Now go, and I will not speak to you about this any further. All right, all right, I'm going. They already know about you. That means one of two things. Either the princess is exceptionally good at spreading rumors... Or they're desperate for new people. Probably a little of both. The safe bets on both yeah. of those being true. I don't think you'll have any trouble catching the attention of the Inquisitors. I just hope I don't draw too much attention. No, I'm sure they have no idea of your real identity. I wouldn't worry about that. Whatever you say, Sky. This Inquisitor Sky. will be more interested in you than he'll let on. I'm not even sure if you needed to talk to Dong Gao to catch his attention. Oh well, I did anyway. Compliment without even a hint of flirting, Sky. Sorry, I forget myself sometimes. <laughs> it's just, well, let's not be late for that little meeting at the flyer. Okay. Fair enough. Book stand. The Physical Universe, a rebuttal. Scholar Shao Shang has once again missed the central point of the philosopher's argument. We do not wish to stall development, nor do we seek to stop people from learning. 
Philosophers see the work of the divine in the physical world and oppose those who defy tradition only because they find those customs inconvenient or outdated. Learning and respect for the past need not be mutually exclusive. We seek only to learn in a way that does not dishonor the celestial beings that give us our very lives. Fair. This must be some kind of, you know, argument. Exit to city. Hmm, d debating ground. Let's see. I find the scholars endlessly amusing. Talk to a few, and you'll understand what I mean. I hope you're not here to pester me. I'm a very busy, important, and educated man, you know. I think I know what Sky meant. What sort of studies keep you so busy? All manner of studies. The history of dramatic systems, applied theology, and, um, celestial integration. All of these are vital pursuits of knowledge. Not that you would understand such lofty matters. Uh, why don't you tell me more about the history of dramatic systems? This answer should be interesting. <clears throat> I have a question I would ask of this scholar, if you would permit yeah, me. Yeah, I think this guy's a fake. Well, you see, drama can be broken down into several systems, and I study the history of those systems over time how they've changed, and that sort of thing. My friend would like to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Well, of course not. A student of theater, are you? I was just wondering about the recent shift in dramatic presentations away from the customary iterative productions where the fourth wall is regularly deconstructed. Does the shift towards more codified productions with barriers established between the presented world and the actual environment create a more immersive experience? I, uh, well, it... That's what I thought. <laughs> you're creative, Yukong, aren't you? Don't even bother lying to us. It's clear you're no scholar. Of course not. I'm... Ah, oh, dread. This isn't working at all. How did you know? That was a pretty sad example of posing as a scholar. You're here to hunt me down, then. Lord Rento has it in for me, and I figured it would come to this. I don't suppose running would do me any good. No. How did someone of your skill manage to con a noble, anyway? I was unjustly accused. I simply petitioned Lady Rento for some silver to support me as an actor. Patronage, it's called. She agreed, but her husband flew into a rage when he found out, and now I have a death sentence on my head. It's not fair, and if you were a decent person, you'd help me get out of this city instead of taking me in. It's the only way I'll get clear of Lord Rento's wrath. Oh, jeez. Do you have any proof that you're falsely accused? You need more proof than my pathetic attempt to pose as a scholar? How about the fact that Lord Rento was out of town when I bilked him? Not that anyone but Lady Rento will confirm that for you. Still, it should be apparent that I'm not some great confidence man. I should probably go talk to Lady Rento. What would my help be worth to you? I'll admit that I can't match the bounty on my head. But I could give you half of what they're offering. I have an idea how I could get out of the city, too. Uh... I don't really want to deal with you right now. I suppose I'll just wait here. There's no point in running. As you could track me down easily enough. I'm going to talk to Lady Rento before I do this, before I deal with him. Oh, I didn't see you there. This magnificent sculpture takes all of my attention, I'm afraid. Is there something I can help you with? Yeah, you don't look like one of the scholars. 
My name is Tong Wei. I am a master excavator from the Valley of the Sprightly Stones. I am here to oversee the installation of this fine specimen of rock. I apologize. I sometimes get excited when speaking about one of our grandest treasures. The valley is truly remarkable. What makes the stone so... Sprightly. No one knows exactly. There are theories, of course. Some say it is divine, and others say it is simply a trick of nature. But the debates truly don't matter. The stones are remarkable, regardless of the reasons for their sprightly behavior. I count myself honored to be able to work so closely with these wonderful stones. Of course, looking upon this sculpture, it is easy to see why some believe that the divine had a hand in their making. Uh, tell me more about the valley where these stones come from. Ah, uh, the Valley of the Sprightly Stones. It is truly a marvel, discovered many centuries ago by explorers who saw the floating stones from some way off. Eventually, people came from around the empire to marvel at the strange occurrence. It wasn't until Emperor Yu Baosi that the stones were used to build. The grandest achievement is the imperial palace itself, which floats above the city like a grand heaven. Of course, it uses additional magic to keep it aloft. What are you doing here if you're the master excavator? <laughs> Everyone deserves a few moments away from work, don't they? Things will be fine at the quarry without me. Besides, it's nice to see the stones on display. This sculpture of Sagacious Tian's head is like an unending well of inspiration to me. I need to be going now. Oh yes, I have much to do myself. Good fortune to you. Alright, cool. All right, had a little bit of a game crash there. Let's uh, <laughs> save, make sure I don't lose my place again. I just had to redo the last couple of conversations. What is this? Uh... As amusing as your savage dances are, once again I have proven the superiority of setting your nose to the grindstone and not mucking about. Now bring some refreshments in a proper mug, or I'll take back the coins of my home and country. Don't you heathens know the worth of a proper king's halfpenny? Uh, what in the visitor? shit? If our customs are so displeasing to you, perhaps you should find lodging elsewhere? Please? And leave you lot to your primitive ways? Tell them what I think of that, Squire Percival. Sir Roderick Ponce von Fontelbottom, the magnificent bastard, will do no such thing. He means to educate you all. Good lad. Found him wading in the mud, planting weeds. You can't keep your crackers crisp doing that. Can't help you if you don't know the horror of a soggy biscuit. I've given him dignity, and unless one of you has the will to deny that I'm your better, I suggest you start learning. We'll have you in proper trousers by the morrow. Wow. Uh, sir, your arrogance is astounding. We are cultured people. Uh, what's that? Someone stepping to the fore? Let's have a look at you. A woman. My dear, not sure what topsy cradle you fell from, but in my country, a lady knows her place, unless she's queen. Can I flip him the bird? The I'd love to flip him the I bird. I bested every one of you who has come forward, whether in tests of wit or combat. You faced a champion of king and country. Now, I didn't ask to land here, but if a storm is going to cast my ship into the very heart of such a dark empire, I'll bring the light of knowledge wherever I can. 
You must hunger for guidance. You're like children. I mean, only a handful of you can even grow a decent mustache. What kind of place is this? Uh, you blind yourself with prejudice. I can prove you wrong. Can you now? Shall we put that to a test? I welcome the chance that you might impress me with a glimmer of intelligent insight. But I will acknowledge that I am likely to disagree just because I know you are, uh, lacking. We will need Good educated God. men to judge the merits of our arguments. Arguments? What kind of contest are you looking for? I've gone to great pains to learn your barbaric tongue, only to find that none of you has much to say. Can you convince me otherwise? I've heard a distinct lack of couplets and quatrains to say nothing of pentameters. Is it any wonder you people live as you do? I charge you with defending the heart of your people. If a group of judges determines that you have adequately done so, I will declare you the winner. Ah, uh, very well. I will agree to this. Who shall judge? Um, whoever you wish. These five, standing here, I'm sure there will be a balance of opinion. The test must be fair. Yeah, that seems very arbitrary to me, Go but on, okay. talk to them all to prove I haven't coerced them. We'll begin the debate when you're ready. Then we'll see how you fare in combat. Doubt you'll do very well. Like the rest, you're all just too damn skinny. Oh my god. I heard you accept the Outlander's challenge. I'm grateful you have seen fit to defend us all. I would be honored to sit in judgment of the debate. Several of my fellow scholars have also volunteered. Great. I trust you will judge fairly? To do otherwise would only help the Outlander win in the long run. If he wants a true debate, we will allow it to progress fairly. Of course, I doubt his arguments will have the weight that he expects. Not here in the heart of the Jade Empire. Um, uh, let's see, what kind of arguments do you favor? I am merely quick to see my own faults, but I, like my fellow scholars, am adept at exploiting the weaknesses of others. Scholars Heng and Zhao are easily swayed with simple facts. Cite such details, and they are certain to change their opinion either for or against. What strategy should I take? The best course is to appeal to the individual preferences of the judges. We are theoretical thinkers, really. <laughs> it is not so much the subject, but the tactic that triggers reaction. Each judge will respond only to argument styles they favor. If a judge likes fact, use it once and he will join your side. Use it again and he will switch back just to further debate. Great. Other arguments may not interest him at all. Okay, I'll get ready for the debate. Thanks. I wish you luck. I look forward to your defense of the Empire. Okay. Uh... Ah. So you are the one who will debate the Outlander. Yeah. I am the fifth of your five judges. Great. What kind of arguments do you favor? Are you implying that I am predisposed to be weak in certain areas? I can't accept that. Some of my fellows, however, are another story. Scholars Zhao and Kai are easy to predict. Dismissing a weak argument gets their attention immediately and will spur them one way or another. What strategy can you offer? Try not to dig a hole you can't get out of. If you can't get everyone to agree with you, just focus on getting as many as you can. Remember, you need a majority of judges on your side at the end of six topics. Yeah, so I basically I just need to get three out of the five to side with me in order to win. The Outlander has very few supporters. He doesn't seem that interested in gathering any. He's clearly used to imposing his opinion regardless of the recipient's desire to have it. His points are debatable, but his presentation is not compatible with the garden. 
Okay, thanks. Yes, make certain you are ready. The Outlander will be a challenging opponent. And you? I greet you. My name is Scholar Kai, and I will be the fourth of five judges for the debate. I suggest you don't mess it up. What kind of arguments do you favor? I am always impartial, but some of my fellows are easy to goad into decisions if you know their tastes. The minister is particularly fond of confrontational arguments. Respond in a rage and you are sure to engage him. Okay. Good, good to know. Good to know. What strategy can you Some offer? Some arguments may win a judge's favor while turning another away. Vary your topics so that you don't end up manipulating the same judges over and over. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you share the minister's disdain for the outlander? He is an insult to our accomplishments as a people. If you fail in the debate, at least take him to task physically. I don't Fair. care where he came from. Anything to get him on his way. Okay. The outlander uses flawed logic. Don't allow him to taint his form of culture and intellect. Mm. Greetings to you. I am Scholar Hang and I will be serving as the second of five judges for the debate. I look forward to honorable discourse. What kind of arguments do you I'm favor? I'm sure the others agree that my tastes are balanced. The minister, however, is easily engaged by sympathetic pleas, as are scholars Zhao and Gu. Okay. I find their appreciation of such fawning to be distasteful, but that is one of the arguments they prefer. What strategy can Try you offer? Choose your arguments in a sequence that eventually turns everyone in your favor. Don't worry about losing a vote on a single topic. Fair. Why do you just why do you dislike the Outlander? I don't dislike him. I find some of his points to be worth discussing, but Sir Roderick is a bit disruptive for the garden. Fair. He may bring attention that we do not want. It would be best to peacefully encourage him to be on his way. I like you. All right. I should get ready. Good luck against the Outlander. He is a tenacious speaker. And you. Oh, this is exciting. I've never been asked to jury a debate before, and now I'm the third of your five judges. My name is Scholar Zhao. Okay. I haven't given favor. it much thought. I pictured myself as balanced, but some of the others are very specific in their tastes. Actually, you can sway scholars Kai and Goo by mocking your opponents. I don't care for it, but they seem to respond quite vigorously. Okay. What strategy can you I've offer? I've argued in this group of scholars many times before. We are so used to each other that we will change opinions just to further the debate. Mm -hmm. Don't worry so much about what you are saying when you respond. Just concentrate on how you say it. Right. Do you share the minister's dislike of the Outlander? He is coarser than the thinkers I am used to, but on the whole, I am not as upset by him as others appear to be. Okay. He seems bent on disruptive behavior. He should be encouraged to take that elsewhere. Yeah. All right, I should get ready. Good luck. This should be an interesting debate. Oh, yes. So, okay. Uh, I think in the next episode, we will uh, see if I can do this debate without making a fool of myself. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how that turns out. As always, if you like what you see, please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Later!